Hello everyone. Welcome to Diagnoser. Today we'll be learning about different types of intracranial bleeds. So firstly let me show you the CT scans and uh, this is the CT scan of this epidural hematoma. This. And this is subdural hematoma. This one is subarachnoid and this one is this intracranial or intraparenchymal bleed. So these are the CT scans and we'll discuss about all these type of intracranial bleeds individually. Firstly, before discussing about this uh, extradural hematoma, let's discuss a bit about the anatomy, the normal anatomy of the skull. Suppose this is the brain, this is the brain parenchyma and above this brain parenchyma, as we know, there is this first layer that invaginates inside this, uh, uh, this gyra and sulci of the brain. This is the pyometer. And above this pyometer, we know there is this continuous layer. This is called as arachnoid. And between this pyometer and arachnoid, there is this subarachnoid space in which this cerebrospinal fluid is present. And above this arachnoid, there is this dura mater. And as you know, there are two layers of dura mater. One is this parietal layer. The outer one is this parietal layer of dura mater. And this inner one is this visceral layer of dura mater. This parietal layer is also called as this endosteal layer of dura mater because this is the periosteum of the skull bones that are overlying it. Suppose this is a skull bone. So the periosteum that lines this skull bone, this is the parietal layer of this dura mater. And this is the other skull bone and this so that is why this uh, uh, parietal layer of uh, the dura mater, this is also known as endosteal layer. And one more thing, uh, the dural venous sinuses, uh, these are present between the parietal and visceral layer of this uh, dura mater. Now let's discuss about this extradural hematoma. Well, in this extradural hematoma, the bleed that is present is present below the skull and above the dura mater. So above the dura mater means it is above the this periosteal layer of dura mater. So that is why. This is the place of bleeding. So the blood is present between the uh, this endosteal layer of dura mater and the skull bone. And as you know, endosteal layer is also the periosteum of the skull bone. So that is why this epidural hematoma do not cross the suture lines because uh, this periosteum of uh, this skull bone, suppose the suture is present here. So the periosteum that is present here basically goes to the outside of the bone. So the bleed that is present between the skull bone and this layer of dura mater do not cross the sutures. But there is exception to this rule. Uh, around 10 to 15% of the cases in children, it is seen that this uh, uh, epidural hematoma can also cross the suture lines. But in adults, in most of the cases, this epidural hematoma shows that uh, the blood that is collected between this endosteal layer of dura mater and the skull bone, this do not cross the suture lines. As you know, the dural venous sinuses, these are present between the parietal and visceral layer of dura mater. So this bleed can compress the dural venous sinuses. So there are two statements. One is it do not cross the suture lines. Another is it can compress the dural venous sinuses. So this was a little bit about the introduction about this extradural hematoma. Now let's study about this extradural hematoma in more details. Firstly, in most of the cases, it is arterial and in arterial, this is middle meningeal artery. This is the main artery, which basically ruptures or uh, the injury to this artery occurs that leads to bleeding in this epidural space. And the next thing is the most common location. The most common location is this temporal region. This, as you can see here, this is the most common location of this uh, extradural hematoma. In most of the cases, it was arterial, but in some cases, it can be venous also. And in the venous, it is due to the rupture of venous sinuses most of the times. That leads to collection in this uh, epidural space. In most of the cases of this epidural hematoma, there is a history of trauma. And after the trauma, the patient become unconscious. And after that, the patient regain the consciousness. And with time, the conscious level of the patient start decreasing and again he start becoming unconscious. And there is this uh, term called lucid interval. And this basically means the period of consciousness between these two unconscious episodes, this is called as the lucid interval. And now about the clinical features, we have discussed about this uh, loss of consciousness. The other clinical feature is patient uh, develops a severe pain. 
and this pain is due to the stripping of dura mater as you know the dura is a pain sensitive structure so due to the stripping of dura mater there is this pain in this extradural hematoma this was about the clinical features and the presentation now let's come to the diagnosis part like how we diagnose this case of uh, extradural hematoma what are the diagnosing modalities that we can use well the major modality and the first modality that should be used in the diagnosis is the ct scan and in the ct scan as you can see this is also a ct picture and in the ct scan there is this uh, lens shaped opacity or we can say that a biconvex kind of opacity that is present and this opacity is basically hyper dense because in the acute condition the blood is hyper dense so when the ct is done in acute condition we can see a biconvex hyper dense area which is limited by the suture lines and the reason for that we have already discussed but yeah there is one thing it can cross the suture lines as i have told you uh, in various conditions and the conditions in which it can cross the suture lines are in case of fracture when the fracture has occurred in the skull bone in case of sutural diastasis and in case of vertex extradural hematoma it is seen quite commonly well along with this uh, lens shaped or biconvex opacity we can also see uh, some kind of midline shift uh, which is not uh, seen in this ct scan but yeah in some cases this midline shift or subfelsine herniation or sometimes un uncle herniation can also be seen uh, in cases of this extradural hematoma this is due to the pressure effect due to the hematoma well after that uh, ct scan mri can also be used in cases of uh, extradural hematoma and after this mri there can be ct angiography or mr angiography uh, to know about the artery that is uh, injured that caused this bleed now after the diagnosis let's come to the treatment part and in the treatment the prognosis firstly let me tell you about the prognosis uh, well even in cases of a large hematoma the prognosis of the patient is quite good well this good prognosis is only after the treatment like if the hematoma is completely removed and uh, to remove the hematoma there is this burr hole craniotomy that is done and if the patient get this treatment in time then the prognosis of this uh, uh, this epidural hematoma is quite good so this is all we have to discuss about this uh, uh, extradural or epidural hematoma we'll discuss about uh, this subdural hematoma in our next video so if you have any question regarding this you can uh, post it in the comment section below or you can dm me on my instagram handle at diagnose it don't forget to like and share this video and subscribe to my channel thank you